senior minister. I think the main problem facing us at the moment is the economy. And I believe the president thinks that I can assist with managing the economy and trying to resolve the problem we have at the moment. And from all indications, we have a lot of serious problems with the economy. The figures we have seen so far are disturbing. And we need somebody with experience and exposure to link the economic ministries and make sure that we put the economy right. How serious are these figures that you talk about? Very serious. Mm. Because Ghana has a program with the IMF. And when you have a program, it means you have targets agreed between you and the IMF. For instance, our target for a deficit by end of year December is about 5% agreed with the fund. But what the figures I am seeing, the deficit is more than 8%. And that is serious, a serious departure from what has been agreed upon. So it is disturbing. What about our debt to GDP? Our debt to GDP is even worse because uh, the limit of debt to GDP is 70%. When you are there, you are in serious trouble. Normally, like when we were leaving office, we left about 26% debt to GDP ratio. And when you are around 50%, you are comfortable. But now we are over 72% in debt to GDP. And therefore, it is serious. That makes us highly indebted. Oh, very highly indebted. Extremely. More Even than 70. Before you to yeah, but you see, at the moment, that's a problem we have. Ghana can never, ever be hippie. Because hippie is heavily indebted, poor country. It means your per capita should be less than $400. Today, Ghana's per capita is 1,200, 1,300. So we are a lower middle income country. So we cannot be described as epic. We can be described as a heavily indebted country, mm -hmm. but not poor. And that's a big difference, like Greece. I mean, it's a heavily indebted country. So that's where we are. So, so what should be the first step in addressing the, the loopholes in the economy? My, first step, my who... first step is to look at the revenue sources and make sure that if, and they are, not that if, make sure that we block all the loopholes in the revenue side. That, that is the, your, your, the softest way. That it does not involve any expenditure. It involves looking at the system and blocking all leakages at the customs, at the airports, at the harbors, everywhere that we have revenue, we must block the leakage. But at the same time, you're looking at, you know, doing away with some taxes. Yes. Some taxes are what we call nuisance taxes. You, you put 17.5% on financial services. How much do you realize from it? Very little. But the efforts of putting up that tax is not worth how much you get it. So don't just call it tax for tax sake. If the tax itself will even impede development, then there's no point keeping it there. You, you want to free the system to develop. So not, we don't free the system with taxes. We don't make money always with taxes. Sometimes you take away taxes to make more money so that people are free to operate to make profit for you to tax. So ne never make it look like you must always impose taxes. No, I don't agree with that method. So what should Ghanaians expect from a government that has inherited an economy that is in a vast year with so many expectations on their side? Well, I think we should all be a little patient. We should come out with all the facts and figures. And it is doable. My point is that the Ghanaian economy is fundamentally strong. It's fundamentally very strong. It is the management of the economy that has been the problem. So let's get there and let's look at it and let's manage it well. But I believe that the first call is on the revenue leakages. We must stop them because you know and I know that the economy is bleeding seriously from leakages. Okay, so um, Mr. Minister, people remember senior minister in the Kufu administration, um, but it's been a while. What is the exact role of the senior minister? Well, I worked very closely with Mr. J.H. Mensa as a senior minister because I was then the minister of finance. J.H. Mensa brought to bear his experience both nationally and internationally. J.H. Mensa brought to bear his knowledge and his understanding of the economy, the practical aspects of the economy. Therefore, the senior minister's role is 
imparting some experience to the younger people in respect of managing the economy. So do you have oversight over all the other ministries? Not necessarily. My, I, my, I, will, I will be much more concerned with the economy. With the economy. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. So we will bring you more reactions from some of the individuals who have been nominated. Okay, Elton there, you will appreciate that this is technology and it does, you know, uh, take its own time <laughs> uh, to do things. So, Malik, we've heard what he's saying. I, I, I've, I think I've, I've forgotten the point you were making previously. But if we can touch on uh, Mr. Safo Mafo and the way he talks about the economy, it sounds scary, does it not? Well, but that's well known. The fact okay. that the economy is Okay, not we've got to go well back known. this moment. Okay, we've got to... Really, how are you to see this through? Well, there are two things. There is, um, I mean, establishing the baseline so that all of us and all Ghanaians know exactly where we are. Uh, but when he says it's not looking good, it's because we are going to run a budget deficit of about, you know, north of 7%, maybe 8% this year. Which means now, that, against what Ghana agreed with the IMF? Well, it's supposed to be 3 to 5% or so. Mm. So, yeah, we would have broken it. But be that as it may, that's what it is. Um, so the question for us is, how do we turn this around? And I think we can. I, I think we can increase revenue uh, because there are certain leakages that we can block. I think we can get value for money um, in our expenditure and that will also create you know, that kind of space for us uh, and to reduce the budget deficit. And once you do that, you have space you know, to then promote your agriculture and all of the other promises that we have. Uh, so I'm not deterred. I, I feel we need to know the truth. And it's because of the truth that people voted this way. Um, so we just need to supply them with the real numbers as is. But as to being able to hold this back, um, I'm very confident that we can. So in terms of revenue, are you only looking at blocking the leakages? Or you may have to put before Parliament, loans, to help you run? Well, I mean, in, in any budget, it's a combination of actual monies that you have and what you do to, you do to supplement it. You know, so when you have a debt to GDP ratio, you know, over 70%, there are certain structural things you have to do. Uh, but that is, you know, financial engineering, and we'll do what we have to do for that to suppress the amount. So yes, senior minister is, um, is, is um, registering um, his disappointment with the degree um, uh, of the difficulties that the economy has, but he is not expressing that we cannot do it and do it well. So, 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 so sir, going forward now, when should we expect a budget, and what kind of budget should we expect from the, the well, MPP administration? Usually we need to have budget passed by Parliament by 2017, March 31st, and so as we speak, we are in the middle of putting that together. So we'll do that. So and that will give a sense of the direction in which we are going to take. So in the face of the challenges that you have with the economy, are we still going to have the Zongo Development Fund, the $1 million to each district yeah. for their own development, yeah. the, the promise to create jobs generally? Yeah. That really is an issue of reallocation of resources and priorities. Um, we are confident that we'll do um, quite adequately in all of those areas that we have thought of. Uh, I don't doubt that we can. And what about yeah. proposed reduction of some of the taxes that we have in our books? That we'll have to do. I think when taxes get too pernicious, uh, people have the tendency to do dodge them, and then you criminalize good citizens. Um, I think we can cut down on some of those um, taxes. At the same time, be very vigilant and deliberate about revenue enhancement, and that we can do. Are you, are you scared that Ghana, as a net importer of oil, and OPEC had decided to cut down production. Obviously, when the world market is going to go up, are you, are, are you, are you, how are you dealing with this to ensure that consumers don't pay so much for, you know, petroleum products? We will have to examine our energy mix, and I think um, um, we likely are going to get a little bit more from gas, um, which will then help um, with, you know. Um, uh, given us a chance to, to breathe uh, from that. Um, uh, so, yeah, I don't expect us um, to be increasing prices of fuel and ECG. Uh, we are looking, actually, 
to see how we can, as we promised, uh, bring some relief um, to Ghanaians. General Professor, thank you very much, and I thank wish you well in your endeavor. Uh, we, we can go and see if we can speak to more people. Uh, the incoming uh, health minister is also speaking to the media. Uh, we'll pick his talks uh, going forward and then try and see if we can speak to the Attorney General designate Gloria Akufu, uh, who is engaged uh, with the media right now. But we, we can hear from the incoming health minister. So hard work and energy to be put into that area, some little restructuring and some reforms, within the shortest possible time, will solve the problems. But like I said earlier, all of them will be based on how much money is provided for you to do what you think should be done. And I believe the president is up to this task. We look for the money and do what Kenyans will accept us for doing. Let's get back to the national health insurance issue. Now, um, it was brought about by the NPP government and another government came in. Over the years, um, Ghanaians have not been uh, very much happy with the way it's been handled. Um, the health insurance is virtually uh, said to have collapsed. Now, you being the health minister, are you going to revive and revamp the national health insurance? I've told some of my colleagues that within a few, the next six months, if you are not able to invest into the health insurance area, for people to begin to see elements of something happening new in that sector, my party and my government will be in trouble. So we are not going to relax at all. I have been the chief executive of health insurance once before, though a very short, limited time, about four or five months. So I know what is in there, and I know what we're going to do in there. We are in the process of identifying the challenges right within the transition time that is what some of us are doing. And uh, when we begin to roll out, you know, things will start working. And I believe we will get the appropriate money to do what we can do to let people begin to feel the change that we have all cried and voted for. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. All right. There is some about you know, agitations in the sector. How ready are you to deal with them? The agitations are human relations issues. Right, so you have to engage and confront these challenges head on. Agitations will be all the time, all the, all the, all over the place. But when you know how to manage your human resources, especially very skilled professional human resources, these agitations can be reduced. There are some hanging in the balance, and we need to confront them. And I think I'm up to the task. We will see how best we can get some of these things resolved. So, so that was the incoming. Uh, Health Minister uh, Kwaku Ajman Menu, who is a member of parliament for Doma Central, and also uh, the outgoing chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. Uh, very soon, we'll be speaking to the incoming Attorney General, and uh, we also want to find out from her uh, her plans going forward to a very sensitive uh, ministry uh, in the country. Attorney General, it does appear to me that the MPP administration will make good of its promises to create an office of a special prosecutor. So when the position of Attorney General was mentioned, we did not hear the inclusion of the Justice Ministry. Clearly, it looks like steps are being taken to decouple that from the Attorney General. And very soon, we're going to find out from the woman who will be heading that particular position, Gloria Akufu, who served as Deputy Attorney General during the first MPP administration under the current President, Nana Adanko Akufu, when he was uh, the Attorney General. We just want to speak to her briefly and then to find out uh, her vision, what she intends doing uh, for as long as she remains the Attorney General of the Republic of Ghana. And then uh, we, can, uh, we can bring our reactions to a close. She's currently speaking to the local media and then we'll pick her thoughts uh, on the issues as we have it. But I can just run, run, run by you the list as presented by... Nana Akufuado, Yawasafu uh, Mafo, is heading uh, to the ministry uh, in, a, in a capacity as a senior minister. We also have Kandapa as the national security uh, minister designate pending the approval by parliament. Alan Kojo Chairman for trade and industry. Ken Oforiata for finance, whom we spoke to some few minutes ago. Dr. Afriya Koto for food and agriculture. Wacha Jakun for the Ministry of Energy. The Ministry of Petroleum and Power now put together under the Ministry of Energy. Uh, Dominic Nitu for defense. Ambrose Derry for interior. Sheria Yokobo Chip for foreign affairs. Gloria Kufu, whom I'll be speaking to very shortly. Attorney General. Haja Alima Mahama, local government. Dr. Maiti Opoku Prempe for education. Kwaku Ajma Manu for help. And tomorrow, the second batch of persons he intends nominating to serve as ministers will be announced 
uh, to Ghana uh, uh, from the presidency. But for now, this is what we have to deal with. What is left is for Parliament, is for the Speaker of Parliament to refer the nominees to the Appointments Committee, for the committee to vet them, to establish their suitability for the job. That's going to take a while. Once they are confirmed, then they can start their role as ministers for the respective ministries they've been assigned to. So that is the procedure going forward. And very soon, we'll be picking a reaction from Madam Gloria Akufu, and then to find out uh, 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 what she will be doing. But uh, like we heard from the senior minister, Yaosaf Mafo, the economy of the country is not looking good uh, as far as the notes they received from government is concerned. And uh, one of the key things that they will be doing will be to block the revenue leakages to ensure that they generate money uh, to deal with the challenges the economy is facing. But nevertheless, they are bent on reducing some of the taxes uh, they consider outrageous uh, uh, in conformity with the promises they made to Ghanaians in the run-up to the elections. And then also, uh, we should expect a budget by the end of March, and that budget would deal with many of the promises made by the Akufuado uh, government in the run-up to the 2016 general election. So very soon, we will be speaking to uh, Gloria Akufu and then to uh, find out uh, what she'll be doing. Uh. Okay, so Elton will be trying to get uh, Madame uh, Gloria Ekufu there. You can tell it's not that it's not that uh, straightforward <laughs> in uh, on occasions like this. Malik, now let's come back to what we were talking about: the economy the, the, and how it looks right now. Uh, Elton has spoken to Mr. Safomafo, who the president pointed out was going to play a very important role. We've got Madame Ekufu now. Okay, we can go. Do you consider fighter and you're going to start a very important office? Manpower. Manpower is important because this is one of the ministries that relies largely on professionals being lawyers. As we speak now, I am informed that the state attorneys, with the exception of Chief State Attorneys, are on strike. That is worrisome because if they've been on strike since October up to now, they haven't gone back to work over remuneration. It's one of the things that I want to tackle immediately. I want to meet with their leadership together with other stakeholders, including the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Manpower, with a view of finding solutions. Um, maybe not in terms of the immediate, but also medium and long term. And we want them to have ownership of the decisions that you take with a view of having them settle down to your work immediately. That is the main thing that I'm engaging. Presently also, uh, there is pending a maritime boundary suit between our country and the Ivory Coast. Oil deposits. Not over oil deposits, over our boundary, our maritime boundary with the Ivory Coast. The arbitration hearings will start on the 6th through to the 7th of February. That also in the forefront. There are also international arbitrations which are key that we need to look at immediately. So those are some of the immediate things that I would want to look at. Are you able to show us some of the international arbitrations that you may deal with? I've, I've, I've mentioned the one, maritime boundaries. I mentioned that one. That's one of the keys because the hearings are closed. So when I go in there, I'll try and see what others and what can be done about it. Yeah, my other issue is about the NDC government had issues with the payment of judgment debts, and that brought the Attorney General's office into the public light for several years. How do you hope these things must be dealt with? Well, that's our government's own debt all over the country. It depends on how you handle it. Even as individuals, we owe debts. Where you know that there is debt that is not pay, you cannot contest. You immediately try to engage and find the money, even if you have to read terms. Sometimes these are left on the books, they are contested in court, sometimes they are uncontested, judgment is entered, interest is running. I want immediately to have a complete list. Sometimes we are flying the big cases such as Wyoming, but it may turn out, I don't know for certain, that there may be some others that are also on the books. I'd want to have a list of those. See what ones are contestable and which ones are not contestable with a view of immediately resolving those ones that you cannot contest and make recommendations for payment. And for those that we have a defense that we need to contest successfully to do so. But it's important that you get to know the full list 
of what is on the books by way of judgment there. You spoke about Oyome and some aspect of his case is still before the court. Are you telling Ghana that you see to the logical conclusion I'll, of this case? I will see to everything, including Oyome. I will see to everything which is on the table of the Attorney General, which is pending. Not only Oyome, but everything which is pending. When, when, when your name was mentioned, we didn't hear the justice aspect to the ministry. Is it the case that it's been decoupled already? It is the Attorney General and Minister for Justice. By law, when you go to the Constitution, it says there shall be an Attorney General who shall be a Minister of State. The other side of the Minister for Justice is because you have oversight over other departments and agencies relative to the law. So you have the Registrar Generals, you have um, Law Reform Commission, Council for Law Reporting, you have Legal Aid, Registrar General. So all these departments are under the office of the Attorney General. And that is what also makes you the Minister for Justice. The two are, the, 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 it's Attorney General and Minister for Justice. There's no decoupling. I know this is because people think that the prosecutorial powers of the Attorney General behind them. It is in the Constitution. It cannot just be taken away. And it is intended to resolve the issue about people who commit co uh, corruption in public service. For that, as an effort to cure that problem, the Special Prosecutor's Office is going to be set up to deal with that aspect. And under the law, the Attorney General can delegate part of the prosecutor powers to the special prosecutor with a view of focusing on that aspect. So the office is the Attorney General and Minister for Justice. Madam, I wish you very well in your new role. And then uh, that was the that was Gloria Kufu. She is the incoming Attorney General. We want to speak to the last person, and then we'll bring uh, our coverage of this special of this special news and our new, yeah, news uh, conference by the by the. By the, by the president, and it's catalogued the 13 nominees so far. That name has been submitted to parliament. Parliament now has a duty to now vet them and then determine whether they are suitable for the job or not. Like the president said, the names have already been given to parliament. The speaker, I'm sure, in the days to follow, will refer the matter to the appointments committee for them to start work on the nominees and then they will have to report back to the House for the House to take a final decision on the nominees. We have 13 so far, and tomorrow uh, another news conference will come on for the other names uh, to form the cabinet, or better so, uh, the government of the Akufuado uh, administration. And we are still at the Jubilee House, uh, picking reactions from the individuals uh, whose name came up for, you know, to the various of the Ghanaian economy, and very soon we'll speak to Dr. Efriye Akoto, who is the Minister Designate for Food and Agriculture, and then we'll bring our coverage of this first news conference uh, uh, as far as ministerial nominees are concerned by the President to a uh, close, and then we'll, 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 we'll take leave from the flag South House of the Republic of Ghana. But I can again run by you the list as presented by.